been having a lot of truck drivers ask us about financing and we just want to give you guys the straight the truth of what it takes to get funding now remember this is a disclaimer the rates are not that great for people that are doing spot market right now you know things aren't the best right now but for people that are still looking for information about financing a semi truck or trailer. This is the newest update for 2023 so that you just have the information and use this information as a blueprint as well, because you might not be ready. Now you might want to be an owner operator next year, but these keys and values that you could get out of this training will basically help you on making the right steps so that when you do go to a bank um, and try to get financing, uh, you will have all your ducks in a row, you know, uh, buyer of a semi truck, right? Uh, I'm going to give it to you. All right, go. What you got for me? All right. Yeah, man. If you're a, if you're a first time buyer here in 2023, here's a couple things you want to have, right? Uh, you want to have a good amount of money in your bank account, right? In your bank statements for the last three months, it can be a personal bank statement, uh, account. That's fine. doesn't have to be business if you're just getting started. Uh, but you're going to want to have probably at least 15, 20, uh, grand in there. Uh, I would say as a comfort, uh, anywhere below 10,000 bucks as an average balance, if you're just getting started, uh, that's a cause for, for concern. I'm not saying we can't help you, uh, but uh, you know that's important. Um, also, first-time buyers, uh, programs available up to 150k. Um, that being said, anything subprime where your credit's challenged, you're probably looking at under 75 grand uh, potentially for a truck. It really just depends on on several different factors. Uh, when it comes to rates and terms, terms right now we're seeing anywhere from really 30 months to 60 months. It just depends on uh, on, on the truck specs and and uh what everything you know works out to credit wise um you know in in rates and stuff you know those are going to be dependent on a lot of different factors uh but our best rates for first time buyers with 20 percent down believe it or not they're still in the high single digits um a lot of clients we're seeing first time buyers uh rates are in the mid to high teens and then you know in some cases uh can't be much higher of course, those are for people that uh, have demonstrated their ability not to pay their bills, but still want to get into the trucking business. Um, so that's a that's a you know high level uh, what you can kind of expect from a down payment, uh, from a rate perspective, and, and a dollar amount what you may qualify for when it comes to buying your first truck. And on average, how much experience would a driver need that's going to help them buy their first truck? Well, the more experience you have, uh, the better your terms are going to be. But you don't necessarily have to have experience. Um, you know, if you're an investor, you're looking to get started, definitely a tough time to do that. Uh, but yeah, there's programs available for you. Um, and, uh, you know, everything in between. So, so we have the CEO, the founder, the funding booth, Bob booth here, just to Alex. give you this information. You know, I appreciate you for being on the show again. Yes, nobody usually will go on here and tell you, Hey man, it might not be the right time for somebody, but. We've been getting a lot of emails where people are saying that they are ready to buy a truck because they do have a business opportunity ready for them and they're not finding any information right now. And so we always want to put that disclaimer out there. If you're a newbie, you don't know what you're doing. Definitely do not just jump in and buy a truck because it could be dangerous. And hey, if you could pay cash for a truck and have no debt and still have a lot of money left to be able to um service that uh, equipment go ahead and do that too definitely 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 this so you know bob you know uh take it away on this uh training just let people know in 2023 you know if you're looking to buy a truck in 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 this time uh what rules have changed or what's going on so let's get into this training program now i appreciate you for being on the show bob Yes, sir, Alex. Appreciate you having me on. Uh, yeah, more so just wanted to talk through a couple things. We get a lot of calls and emails, uh, and there's usually a couple uh, main questions, you know, frequently asked questions that uh, that customers have, right? So I figured it made sense to kind of uh, go over uh, a few of those questions and, uh, you know, the reason why uh, things are the way they are, right? And the factors that go into, into things. So, um, you know, like you said, Alex, man, today's, you know, it's a tough time to, to buy a truck, but it all depends on the situation that you're in, the circumstance, who you're hauling for, uh, what lane you have, 
uh, what relationships you have. Um, you know, I just talked to a guy uh, today and he's, you know, he's getting six bucks a mile to haul uh, reefer trailers. So for him, you know, he's making good coin and uh, he's doing pretty well. Um, you know, on the, on the contrary, I have other, we have other customers that unfortunately are, are shutting it down and, and, you know, turning the trucks in. Uh, so I guess it all depends, but, uh, we'll, we'll keep our head down and keep helping people that, uh, that want to help. And, uh, hopefully you guys find this helpful, um, when it comes to, you know, figuring out what goes into truck financing. Uh, so we'll really cover three things today. Um, the first is going to be, uh, you know, the first question we get a lot of times is what's my down payment look like, right? Um, and it's, it's such a loaded question because it just depends on so many different factors. Uh, so what I've done is just kind of broken down the factors, talk through them a little bit, um, to, you know, to let you know what determines, uh, the down payment. So generally speaking, um, unless you're an established business with over two years, uh, time in business and you have a truck on the road, uh, zero down really isn't something that that's available right now. Um, maybe you could go get a personal loan or something like that, but that's completely different than, uh, than business financing. So, um, this, you know, the terms and things we're going to talk about is strictly for, you know, commercial equipment financing, right? Um, so with us, yeah, we have zero down approvals available for people that are established already on the road, uh, working for themselves as an owner op or, you know, have a corporation, whatever that, that may be. Uh, but generally speaking, you're looking at in between 10 and, and 30% down payment on the truck mm. price. Right? Can you enlarge that real quick for me, Bob? Yeah, hang on. Can you still see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, jump in uh, uh, view mode. Yep. I don't, does it enlarge it better or no? Hang on, hang on. Let me do this. How's that? Hey, baby. Let's rock and roll. Sweet. All right. Um, so, like I said, uh, the the down payments are going to range in between 10 and 30 percent. Um, the 10 percent down payments, uh, those are for the customers that have super clean credit history, really good driving experience. They've been doing this a long time. They've got good money in the bank, so on and so forth. Uh, even some of the more you know, competitive programs we offer when it comes to interest rates, you know, still being in the single digits. They even want to see 15, you know, sometimes even 20 percent down on trucks. Right. Um, so there's a lot of different things that, that go into it. Uh, and, you know, we'll cover a few here. One of them is obviously your driving experience. Right. How long you've had your CDL, how long you've been on the road, uh, who you're driving for and what you're going to be doing. Um, that really factors into what options may be available. Right. Um, you know, Alex, there's programs out there that if uh, if people don't have their CDL for three years, regardless of, you know, how much money they've got in the bank, how good their credit is. Uh, none of that matters. You know, if they don't check that box, they don't, they don't, they're not going to get approved for that program. Right. Um, so that's one thing that's super important is your driving experience. Um, and then secondly, your, your personal credit situation, obviously um, the better the credit, you know, typically the, the lower the down payment's going to be, uh, you know, when you look at it, look at it from a risk perspective, right? If uh, if you don't have the best credit, obviously, if you're going to be financing equipment, they're going to want more money down uh, to have less risk and, you know, have equity in the equipment from day one. Whereas uh, more credit based lenders that are really just looking at uh, the credit of the client, uh, they're going to feel a little more comfortable, you know, not necessarily overextending themselves, uh, but just being a little bit more uh comfortable lending a little more money loan to value wise right uh so right. You know, the better the credit typically the lower your down payment is going to be right uh, i had touched on this a little bit but uh whether you're a first-time buyer or you're an established company right uh this this is very important you know if you're an established company with over two years time in business uh there's programs out there that you may not even be able to qualify for much like the driving experience and needing needing a certain amount of cdl time to qualify uh that's the same thing right um so the longer you have your time in business for uh the lower your down payments are going to be right um if you're just getting your first truck you know yeah the down payment's going to be higher it, it is what it is that's that's the nature of the beast um you know your personal finance situation right what do I mean by that? Well, how much money do you have saved up cash? Uh, do you have any real estate saved? Right. If we just take a quick step back and we think about this, you know, without going into too much detail, 
uh, if, if you were to go lend money, you know, Alex, let's say you're, you're going to lend me a hundred grand for, for a truck. Right. Um, right. and, and I, uh, you know, I've got a 650 credit and I've got five grand in the bank. Uh, but Alex, I'm going to do 15 grand a month. And once I get this truck, I'm going to get it, you know? Um, now let's look at that's, that's, you know, Bob one, right. And then Bob two, same situation says the same thing, but he's got, you know, 50 grand in the bank. Who are you more likely to, you know, to lend to, right? right. Uh, who I, I don't want to lend to someone that has a little bit more cushion because worse comes to worse. I know that they could pay their bills for a while. Exactly. Right. We're, you know, from the credit perspective, we're looking at the worst case scenario. What ifs, right? What if the truck is down because of repairs? What if the truck is down because the driver's sick, can't work, can't pull, right? Uh, what if you hire a driver and the dryer walks away on you? You know, there's a lot of what ifs uh, in, in there. So they want to see, you know, that you're, you're stable, right? So personal finance situation is important. Right? What, what, what does it look like these days with like old commercials and, and people saying, bad credit no problem uh, uh no experience no problem i mean do is that a myth or do things like that actually still exist no yeah because no it's it's doable for sure yeah i mean there's plenty of programs out there for cr clients with with poor credits right and to your point uh you know if you have bad credit and you've demonstrated the ability not to pay your bills then yeah, your monthly payments and your down payments for that matter are going to be much higher, right? Alex, there's programs we offer that that don't do credit checks, really. They don't have minimum credit requirements in terms of like um, what your credit score is. Um, but they ask for anywhere between 30 and sometimes 40, 50 percent down payment. Oh, so they want they they definitely want to make sure you got some cushion. So is there anything such as bad credit and no money? Because you know, people always try to, you know, hook people in with that. You don't need money and you got bad credit, you know, and no experience. I mean, are these fakes in the business? When you it know, comes to business financing, if you've got bad credit and no money, I mean, we can't help you. Um, you know, the only thing I can think of, uh, which you can probably think of, too, is uh, like, you know, if you're just going to go on to a leasing company, that's really the only place I can think of. Where, you know, and that's totally different than, than getting your own truck and doing your own thing, right? Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of people that we speak with that have poor credit and not a lot of cash, they end up going the lease route because it's a, you know, it's a very low barrier of entry when it comes to down payment. Mm -hmm. um, so watch out for that, people. Just make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. Because, uh, you know, if you got bad credit and no money and then they go, oh, we got a program that might fit you. You, you might just be uh, leasing for them and, you know, thinking that you're you're going to own this equipment one day. So definitely read contracts and know what you're getting into. Yeah. And to that point, Alex, um, you know, a lot of times and we'll cover this in, in the next few slides, like the dollar amounts of the trucks. Right. And all that stuff. Uh, you know, you go to lease a truck. Uh, and this is a good example. Right. If you're uh, if you're currently leasing, for instance. Right. And you're leasing a truck for i don't know it's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar rig right and you're leasing it and your monthly payments are are you know five grand a month or whatever they are um they you know when you go to finance that chances are if you if your credit's not great it's gonna be tough to get you 150 grand uh worth of financing right right uh, so when you're out there comparing maybe what your lease is now and the truck that you have now uh it's all going to be you know, relative to what your credit situation is. So just because you could lease a truck that, you know, it's a brand new truck and it's worth 150 or 200,000. And, you, you know, just because you can make the payments and just because they give it to you doesn't necessarily mean that there's, you know, uh, loans available for you uh, to finance that same type of equipment. Does that make sense? That does. No, that yeah. does make sense. You know, yeah. and, and I think that's what the problem in the industry is. A lot of people, they go out there, they try to buy their first truck and can't. And then this finance company that might also own the company might try to not swindle them, but throw them into a lease program and make that start sounding better, you know? Yeah. And, and honestly, I've, uh, I've talked to some guys and, and gals that are lucky enough to have, you know, smaller smaller carriers and, and companies that you know 
really just want to take care of the drivers and stuff. I know it's few and far between nowadays, it seems. Right. Uh, but they are out there. You know, there's a, not every lease purchase that a customer does. You know, they're not getting raked over the coals every single time. There are some right. really reasonable things. But the, uh, you know, the general notion is that you pay a little bit more for it. But, um, you know, not to get too far down the rattle of, uh, of leasing a truck and, you know, the benefit. I hear you you know disadvantages but you know you got to do what you got to do if it's if it's what you need to do to get on the road you know and it makes sense for you then do it but just uh just know what you're getting into right yeah uh, you know and then uh another thing that goes into the down payment not to get too far off track is collateral and what you're buying right um for instance if uh if you're buying a, an older truck may not book out as well or something like that obviously they're gonna want more money down uh than if it may be a newer truck right uh, every lender, every funding source is going to have different guidelines. Um, you know, some of the guidelines are dependent on um, the mileage of the truck and they don't care about the years. Right. Um, and then sometimes it's, you know, the years and the mileage. Um, but it's uh, it's never just the year of the truck. Mileage is always something that's important, um, you know, to dictate that. Um, and then last but not least is home ownership. Uh, what's your current resident status? Right um do you own a home or not sometimes owning a home can allow you to get into programs that you can't even consider if you're not a homeowner i know it's not fair i get it you know most truck drivers are on the road a lot more times than their home uh but it's the reality of the situation and you know we're not here to, to tell you what you want to hear uh we hope that you you know you take this information and you understand it um but sometimes it's not always uh and it's not always the best right uh we, we get that a lot alex you know what it doesn't make sense for me to be a homeowner i'm on the road all the time it's like, yeah, that's fine, uh, but it shows stability um, in your ability to make a consistent payment each month. So that that's important. Um, Perfect. So, you know, just to reiterate, there's a lot of different factors. I'm sure there's some more things that go into into it. These are some things that uh, that we look at and a lot of our, our funding sources look at as well. Uh, so we thought it would be good to kind of highlight here. And, and like I said, uh, zero down. Uh, for startups, uh, new business ventures, not something that's really doable. It's, it's just not, uh, you know. So that's the myth so. these days for, for most. Uh, in 2023, zero down, it, it's just probably not going to happen. So uh, truck drivers, save for up a your startup, money. For a startup, yeah. For a startup. Now, clear, of course, yeah. if you're 10 trucks deep and you have great relationships, uh, zero down might not be an uh, issue, right, Bob? Yeah. And even uh, as long as you have over two years in business and you have a truck on the road and you're showing your ability to, to generate revenue with that truck, mm -hmm. there's zero down approvals available. There certainly are. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, we just did a deal the other day for uh, it was a zero down approval for ninety two grand. Um, and the customer's first truck was through uh, a different lender. And it was a much, much he had like a, a 30 percent down payment on his first truck, a much higher rate. Uh, so. You know, you never know, right? Uh, it's certainly available, but you have to check the boxes. Uh, gotcha. So, but for a first time buyer, first time buyer, yeah, you got to come to the money. You got to come to the table with some, with some money in your pocket. And also, you know, there's programs out there that aren't going to care that they're wiping out your entire savings uh, for a down payment and that you have no money saved up for for working capital. Um, so there there are programs out there for that, but that's not something obviously we suggest, Alex. Uh, don't spend all your money in your account on the down payment, even if you get approved, because uh, then you don't have any working capital. Then you're really putting yourself in a pinch, right? No, so I appreciate the honesty. Yeah, you could, but it may not be the best thing to do. No, that's excellent. Um, so let's uh, let's go to the next slide here. Oh, perfect. And then uh, oh, this is another good good question we get a lot of, right? How much can I qualify for? And I touched on this a little bit before, right, Alex? So um, a lot of people come to us and they ask us, well, what can I qualify for? I don't know. I don't really have a truck picked out yet. I want to know what I, what my buying power is, and, you know, what my down payment looks like, what my terms look like. And uh, we can certainly let you know uh, through the pre-approval process, which we can discuss later. But, uh, you know, for for the, you know, the qualifying question, what do you qualify for? Here, here's what kind of goes into it, right? Again, time and business, I sound like a broken record, uh, but whether you're you're just getting started or you're, you know, you're an established business, right? Um, that's very important, right? Um, there's banks out there that offer uh, approvals for startup ventures, 
let's say up to 75,000 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. And that same customer with that same credit profile, as soon as they hit the two year mark, uh, could potentially qualify for up to 150K app only. And then if they have financials, you know, potentially up to half a million bucks or, you know, whatever their financial situation warrants. But simply because their time in business was under two years, they just can't qualify for any more than that dollar amount. Right. Um, so it's really dependent on on that. Right. Um, when it comes to, you know, the full amount, 150 grand is kind of where we draw the line for a new business. Um, I've done uh, deals over that with full financial disclosure, uh, but it's not the norm. It really isn't. Um, you know, so keep that in mind as you're out there shopping, usually under 150 grand. And, and I think we can both agree if you're just getting on the road, mm -hmm. uh, that's a pretty big note. So that, you that's, think about that's a huge our truck <laughs> you know uh a lot of the programs are in between let's say 50 and a hundred thousand with their um with their lending amounts for first-time buyers um and then obviously over two years time in business uh really the sky's the limit it, it just depends on your you know other factors uh such as the next thing which is comparable debt right um so comp debt alex is super important um it's becoming more more critical nowadays it seems uh you know a lot of lenders are picking up on that um and, and seeing if the customer has financed any type of equipment or really any note that's close to what they're looking to buy now right so if you look at a customer that has a fifty thousand dollar car loan and that's the highest amount on their credit and they go to apply for a hundred and fifty thousand dollar truck there's a pretty big difference there right that's three times mm -hmm. what they're financing now so um, you know, some banks will be okay with not having comp debt, uh, but those programs are typically higher rates, heavier down payments, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, it's usually anywhere between 50 to 80%. So let's say you have, um, you know, a $50,000 car loan, uh, and you've been paying good on that for two years, you know, you may be able to qualify for I don't know, 80 to a hundred thousand bucks worth of worth of financing. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Um, so not saying that's the case for everybody. Uh, but if, uh, if, if you have a 750 credit score and all you financed is, you know, small credit cards through department stores and like a car for 20 grand and you don't really do anything else, but you pay your bills on time, it, it, it's probably going to be a hurdle for you to get over uh, to finance a truck that's like a hundred thousand bucks. You know, your credit profile is probably more suitable for, you know, in between 50 or $60,000 worth of financing. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's really important. Um, and then obviously uh, your credit history, what, uh, you know, what your credit looks like. If you don't pay your bills, uh, you're probably not going to qualify for as much as you, you know, as if you did pay your bills, right. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, some lenders out there will, you know, have minimum credit requirements regardless right some don't um the ones that don't typically offer uh less approval dollar amounts than the ones that do so uh, that's certainly important uh to keep in mind and then uh what you're buying right uh the truck specs that has a lot to do with it um for instance you know six months ago we were in a market that was pretty crazy i would say right with truck prices Definitely. so you know, back then it was, it was more of an example than it is now. But like, if you had a truck that was selling for 80 grand, but we, you know, the bank only thinks it's worth 40, that's going to have a direct correlation to how much you're actually going to qualify for. Right. Um, they may still finance the truck, um, but they're only going to outlay whatever money they're comfortable with putting out there. And you're going to have to come up with the difference. So uh, that's something to keep in mind uh, what the truck is priced at. Make sure that the bank's not overpaying. Um, that's going to depend on what, what they're going to lend for you. And then uh, this last one is, <laughs> you know, more times than not, you run into a situation where, uh, you know, the client's credit's good, got good bank statements, um, you know, relative to what they're doing. Um, but, you know, they want a single digit rate and a really competitive approval, but they haven't done their tax returns in two years. Right. Mm. That's so, going to be a deal breaker. <laughs> it, is. it is. Yeah. You know, so there's plenty of app only programs out there that don't require financial disclosure, right? Your tax returns, your personal financial statement, um, more details about, 
your finances, right? Uh, the more information we have, the more comfortable and you know educated decision we can make on uh, on the financing, right? But if you don't have all this stuff available, you may be you know stopping yourself from qualifying for certain programs, right? For instance, if you've got great bank statements and great credit, uh, we we may be able to get you an approval for let's say seventy five grand. But if you want to buy a, a two hundred thousand dollar truck uh, and you don't have tax returns. You know, yeah, we might still be able to get you approved, but the terms may not be as favorable as if you had your tax returns, right? Um, so I guess you know the lesson here: uh, make sure you're keeping your your documentation updated, right? Um, there's so many different things you can do to to keep your stuff in order. Uh, you know, I'm not promoting anybody, but we use QuickBooks. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward system. Um, All right ties into your bank statements and then uh you know you're able to categorize your expenses it keeps things in line and uh from the finance perspective uh when you go to ask somebody for a profit and loss or a balance sheet and you're able to produce that pretty quickly uh it saves a lot of time and could potentially be the difference between you getting a really good approval and a mediocre approval um uh, so sometimes it's on you to you know to make sure you're doing what you got to do to make sure your paperwork's in order because if it's not you may not qualify no, that's yeah. great. That's great advice, you know, and for the people that are thinking about buying a truck in two years from now, but and never deal with doing your tax returns and doing your paperwork. Well, guess what? This is how you start setting up yourself for the future. So there it is. Yeah, that's exactly. Fun. No, if you're just starting out, get QuickBooks now. If there's anything or get some type of accounting software that you can use internally that tracks all of your stuff. Right. Uh, we're doing a deal now, Alex, uh, you know, customers, uh, great customer really nice guy uh he didn't have any type of records or anything like that so uh he had to go and manually review his last 12 months bank statements in order to produce a document that we need from him in order to you know hopefully get the approval uh so you know is it is it the end of the world he has to do that no but uh it probably saved him it would save him probably three hours of his evening last night had he had quickbooks or, or another accounting software that's similar to it uh yeah there's a monthly fee to it but you know, you know, everything costs money nowadays, unfortunately. Um, yeah, right. It's, it's a good, <laughs> it's a, it, it's a good investment. Um, that's for sure. Um, now, you know, just to cover us and, and what we can do, right. Um, the, our app only program for first time buyers is up to 150 K. Uh, if you're established, if you've got, let's say 10 trucks or more in your fleet, um, and you've been in business for a couple of years, I mean, yeah, we may be able to look at you know, I look at you up to 500,000 um, and really anything in between for app only um, outside of that, you know, full financials and stuff would be needed. Um, but it, it all depends on your, you know, these, these characteristics for your situation. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. You know, definitely uh, pause and rewind the video people. Um, you know, there's a lot of value in this training. It's really just to get you set up. A lot of you watching this uh, will be first time buyers. So just know, you know, bad credit, fix your credit, you know, um, down payment, make sure you have money. Uh, one big part that a lot of truck drivers run into is they think because they have good credit and then they're making good money, but $10,000 is coming in, but then $10,000 is coming back out, you know, to the bank that pretty much means that you have no money saved. So you just have to, get all your ducks in a row and remember that pretend you are the bank. If you were going to lend someone money, it's great that they make $50,000 a month coming in. But if $50,000 is coming out, then that means that they don't have any money to pay you. And that's why you're not getting approved. So uh, do you find yourself uh, running into that a lot, Bob? I, uh, yeah, I would say not necessarily a lot of clients where they're, you know, making 50 and spending 50. Uh, but a lot of times clients are making 50 and then moving, moving 50 around. Right. And what do I mean by that? Right. Move, you know, you get, you get paid through all one account in your business. And then now you're going to take that money and you're going to spread it out across different bank accounts and stuff like that. Uh, when you do that, it's not a problem, uh, but it's just going to create more of a, more of a headache uh, to send in more bank statements and show that you have the cash. Right. Um, so I guess there's a, there's a difference there, but yeah. Um, you, you definitely don't want to burn through cash. Yeah. Uh, How much yeah. cash should, uh, um, 
cash to uh what what's the like just say let's say on an average if a if a truck you're trying to buy is fifty thousand dollars right what what type of cash should you have saved in your bank at all times if you want to make a purchase like that is there a rule of thumb uh it depends on the program depends on the situation uh honestly everybody looks at bank statements a little differently too which is kind of interesting right mm -hmm. uh so in some cases uh you know some lenders only require let's say uh five percent of your ending balance you know all right let's take a step back actually uh balances there's balances there's deposits and there's withdrawals on on bank statements and then there's nss right mm -hmm. okay meaning insufficient funds right so some lenders are going to look at uh deposit strength and how much money a customer is making per month and they may not care about the balances at the end of the day uh other other programs are going to look at both the balances and the uh the deposits and then uh, there's some that are just going to look at the balances and not care about the deposits just make sure that there's money in the account so uh for the clients that are looking for uh for the clients that are looking at um you know to see how much money do i need to have in my bank uh usually 10 15 grand at all times is like you know that's acceptable you know okay no that's uh, a you know that that's some friendly advice right there bob so hey 10 to 15 K people make sure you, you have something like that in your, your bank before you, you start really looking around. So, you know, we're just, we're again, nothing set in stone, but right. you're in a better position if you do have 10 K in the bank. Yeah. And, and, and it has to be aged. What do we mean by that? It has to be three months of bank statements. So uh, if, you know, sometimes we tell a customer after it's too late, Hey, you know, you're, you don't have enough money in your bank account. And they're like, oh, well, I can just go put money in the bank. And it's like, well, okay, but it's not really going to solve the problem we have. So if, if you're that type of person that holds money on the side and you're looking to get into trucking, um, then, yeah, you know, build a bank account up and have three months of bank statements with an average balance of around 10 or 15 grand. It's going to help you out. It will. Awesome. No, that's some great fun facts. And I appreciate that. Yeah, no, thanks. You know, I just asked these questions as somebody that um, would – think about buying a new truck and what they would need. So no, that's very helpful. Yeah, fair enough, man. And then, uh, you know, the last thing I wanted to cover Alex, if we still got some time. Sure. Of course. Um, is, uh, is the rate, you know, we get a lot of customers that. that uh oh, most finance here. companies don't talk about the rate. What's going on <laughs> yeah. here. Right. What are your rates? What are your rates? And that's like, you know, a lot of the times, I don't want to say the rates are relevant because the rates are important. Yeah. It determines how much your monthly payment is. Uh, but you also have to keep in mind your rate is going to be a direct correlation to you, to your credit situation, to your experience, to what you're buying, uh, to who you're working with, the funding source you're working with, all of that stuff matters. So we'll just go through a little bit here to, to kind of speak to that a little bit more. Uh, listen, our rates are anywhere from single digits, uh, to <laughs> to really high um you know it depends on you know there's some state restrictions where you know alex there's customers that will you know I'll, I'll send a deal in and underwriting will get back to me and say you know unfortunately this customer's risk is too high for us to approve them they are an approvable customer but because of state restrictions some states have restrictions on how high interest rates can be and rates the customers can be mm -hmm. um you know, the banks will, you know, just take a pass on them rather than give them an approval under what their rate restriction is. For instance, uh, New York, I think it's, you know, 25 or, or 30 percent. The rate can't exceed, which, yeah, it's pretty high. Uh, but for somebody that's never paid uh, anything on their credit on time or, you know, has a bunch of charge offs and stuff uh, is really the only option that they have. Uh, my point is, you know, the bank wouldn't even they won't even say, oh, we'll do this one on 24 percent just to get the deal. They'll just decline the customer in totally. No, I got you. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but to get back to it, uh, the funding source you're working with, what determines your rate? That is one thing that's super important. Who are you working with? Who, you know, are you, you know, where I don't hide it, right? We're, we're a finance, uh, we're a finance broker, right? So we're partnered with a bunch of different banks, funding sources, uh, independent leasing companies, uh, you know, people with private money that are, you know, much smaller that do investments, things like that, uh, and all the above, right? Um, so when you work with a group like us, we're able to kind of take a look at your situation and, and kind of line you up with 
where we think we can get you approved uh, for the best deal. You know, a lot of the times that's going to be where's the best rate. But depending on the conversation we have, uh, you know, you may or may not have a certain dollar amount needed or whatever it is. So uh, we do the best you can. But my point is this. If you're just working with one direct funding source, uh, they're going to try to shove whatever approval and whatever rate model they have down your throat, to try to get you to close the deal. Right. And sign on the dotted line. Now, uh, if that's a local bank or credit union, chances are it's probably a pretty good deal. Um, but you also need to make sure you're, you know, you know what you're getting yourself into. Right. Um, so there's so many different banks out there. Everybody lends money at different rates and different terms. Right. Um, and I use this example uh, quite a bit. Right. Right now in the market we're in, rates are high. There's no question about it. Right. So if you go to uh, like a CIT bank, I think they're offering right now on their um, on their high yielding savings accounts, a rate of return above 3%, right? And some smaller banks are even given, I've seen like close to 4%, right? So you go to your bank, you put 50 grand in that account and you're getting, let's say, 3.5% return on your money every year, right? If you go to a different bank, you take the same 50 grand and let's say, uh, I think Bank of America's is like less than half a percent or whatever it is right now. You put that same amount in Bank of America's account, you're only going to get half a percent. I mean, they're both banks, right? They're both big banks, but they're completely different when it comes to rates, right? Uh, so that's the same thing with uh, with truck financing, right? Uh, every bank is different. Every bank has different rates. So, you know, you can certainly take the time and shop around yourself, but you're probably doing yourself a disservice simply because uh, you're going to have to run your credit six times, this, you know, sideways and um it's going to take you a lot of time and a lot of effort and you may not hear you know get all the answers you want um so that's why you know working with a good funding source is super important in a direct correlation to what the rates are no that's perfect you know yeah. um you know and hey you know bob's my friend you know he sh shoots it straight you know uh i would say most finance companies they will not talk about rates they won't talk about this they won't talk about that you know and you know it's, it's kind of like you just heard, you know, if you have great credit, you have a lot of money before you touch anybody, go talk to your local credit union. You know, that's what Bob told me, right? Go talk to your local bank. They might be able to help you and give you the best rate first. You know, right. uh, a lot of finance companies aren't going to tell you just the truth, you know, and here's the thing, Bob, why do you finance companies? We can't speak on, you know, their names and this and that, but why do they have such a hard time just telling people the truth? Because they're going to find out anyways. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I guess everybody has a different reason. Like uh, for me, I like to sleep at night. So if I like, if I, you know, if I'm, <laughs> I just want to tell the truth to the customer, I don't want to like BS them or BS them. And then, you know, worry about a call two weeks down the road. Like, right. uh, you know, there's a lot of greed out there, Alex, right. There's a lot of people that are trying to put food on the table for their families, right? And I guess that's not greed, but it could be a desperation move. A lot of people will tell you what you want to hear just to get a deal done. Um, you know, it's getting harder now to uh, to lie about rates, but there's plenty of times where our customers call us, they say they have a certain rate on a deal. And I run the numbers and it's not even close to what's being quoted. So, hmm. um, you know, I try not to lie about that. We, you know, we've had an APR calculator on our, or, you know, a rate calculator on our website for a while now. And, you know, like I said earlier, the rates, the direct correlation of you and your credit hitch, your situation, what you have going on. Um, it's it's kind of out of our control to an extent. Right. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, also, another thing people ask a lot about is, well, if I, if I finance a different dollar amount, is the rate going to stay the same? And that depends. It depends on the lender. It depends on the program. A lot of uh, programs are tiered. So for instance, your rate may be better at a hundred grand worth of financing than it is at 50. Mm. Um, you know, also uh, the term as well, right? Your rate may be a little bit uh, lower at 60 months than it is for 48 months, right? Uh, some lenders do that, some don't. Some are flat across the board, uh, some aren't. Uh, so it really depends and, and you know, to my point above the funding source you're working with why is that important because of what i just said some lenders are different uh when it comes to terms and some lenders are different when it comes to dollar amounts uh so it's important to work with a source that's you know resourceful right and can and can make it happen for you 
uh, and have those different options available. Right. No, that's, that's perfect. You know, um, uh, are we missing anything that, uh, we should, uh, talk about in this that you'd like? Uh, let me take a look. Um, another one thing people ask about is down payment, Alex, right? If I put more down, is that going to change my rate? Um, in some cases that we use it as a negotiation, right? If the, you know, let's say they have a zero down approval now and the rates, you know, 12%, you know, I'll, I'll go back to credit and say, Hey, um, you know, can we, if the customer puts down 20%, can we get, you know, can we get the A rate, which, you know, let's say 9% or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes that happens, but uh, when we're dealing with anything that's not really good credit or, you know, that's subprime uh, put more money down, isn't going to change your rates. Uh, the rates are the rates um, and they're, they're really based on risk profile. Right. Um, so the higher the risk, the higher the rate. And a lot of them are set in stone. Um, most funding sources, uh, like in the trucking side, will they have set rates, right? You know, twenty five percent across the board. Uh, that's subprime stuff, guys. So don't you know? Don't freak out thinking we're we're just offering those high rates. Again, everything's relative. And uh, you know, if you're watching this video and we've helped you out in the past, uh, you know, we'd love love to see the comments uh, in your experience because uh, you know I feel we do a good job taking care of customers, and the repeat business shows also. You so know, and uh, you know, and remember too, people, if the rates are high. That's nobody's fault, but your own fault. Fix your credit, gain more experience, have more money saved up in the bank, make it comfortable for people to want to lend you money. We have to take accountability if you want to be in business. You know, um, if we were going to do, uh, let's do like a, a, a quick intro. If we were to intro this, um, if I were to give you one minute to tell me, uh, in 2023, Bob, uh, what do you need, you know, on average to be able to get financing? If that's what you're looking for, if you're a first time, you know, uh, buyer of a semi truck, right. Uh, I'm going to give it to you. All right, go. What you got for me? All right. Yeah, man. If you're a, if you're a first time buyer here in 2023, here's a couple things you want to have, right. Uh, you want to have, uh, Good amount of money in your bank account right in your bank statements for the last three months it can be a personal bank statement uh account that's fine it doesn't have to be business if you're just getting started uh, but you're going to want to have probably at least 15 20 uh grand in there uh, i would say is a comfort uh, anywhere below ten thousand bucks as an average balance if you're just getting started uh that's a cause for for concern I'm not saying we can't help you uh but uh you know that's important um also first time buyers uh programs available up to 150k um that being said anything subprime where your credit's challenged you're probably looking at under 75 grand uh potentially for a truck it really just depends on on several different factors uh when it comes to rates and terms terms right now we're seeing anywhere from really 30 months to 60 months it just depends on uh on on the truck specs and and uh what everything you know works out to credit wise um you know in in rates and stuff you know those are going to be dependent on a lot of different factors uh but our best rates for first time buyers with 20 percent down believe it or not they're still in the high single digits um a lot of clients we're seeing first time buyers uh rates are in the mid to high teens and then you know in some cases uh can be much higher of course, those are for people that uh, have demonstrated their ability not to pay their bills, but still want to get in the trucking business. Okay. Um, so that's a that's a you know high level uh, what you can kind of expect from a down payment, uh, from a rate perspective, and and a dollar amount what you may qualify for when it comes to buying your first truck. And on average, how much experience would a driver need that's going to help them buy their first truck? Well, the more experience you have, uh, the better your terms are going to be. But you don't necessarily have to have experience. Um, you know, if you're an investor, you're looking to get started, definitely a tough time to do that. Uh, but yeah, there's programs available for you. Um, and, uh, you know, everything in between. So the rule of thumb is the more experience you have, chances are the more competitive the program's going to be with regards to the rates, the down payments and the terms. Um, but that doesn't mean we don't have programs available for folks that are just getting out there, uh, with their CDL. No, I love that. I love that. You know, so if you guys are getting value from this and you want to see the whole training course, uh, basically it'll be right after this and you guys can see it. So you get a better understanding of what type of down payment you might need, what type of experience you might need, uh, some of the myths and some of examples of what to do and what not to do to better your chances. Again, 
disclaimer for everyone out there we're not telling you to buy a truck or 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 buy a truck we're just telling you that hey for the people that are looking to buy a truck in 2023 and you're looking to finance a truck these are some things to look at that are up to date so that you have this information and you have it for free you know so yeah i appreciate you exactly alex and just one more thing i mean to cover if if you are one of those people that's interested in you know and seeing what you qualify for, right? Uh, you know, our process is simple. It's straightforward. It doesn't hurt your credit to see what you qualify for. You know, um, so all you need to do is visit out the link in the comments, right? Uh, and here's the, here's what we would need, right? Um, just an application. Last three months of bank statements. If you're just getting started, personal bank statements are okay. Um, the truck questionnaire and then the truck info. If you don't have a truck picked out yet, that's okay. We'll let you know what you qualify for, what the potential terms may look like, right? Um, this is the link that you want to click on, uh, thefundingbooth.com backslash mother trucker. And you'll find it very simple and straightforward. Takes you right to our website. You'll see, please follow these steps for pre-approval. The first thing you're going to do is complete our application. It's one page. The second thing you're going to do is click here to complete uh, the questionnaire. And the third thing you're going to do is email these items to credit at thefundingbooth.com. And once we have all these items, we're able to give you in, you know, a breakdown of really what program you may qualify for, what things look like, so on and so forth. And all of this is done without any impact to your credit. It's all a soft inquiry. Uh, so there's no hard inquiries or impact to your credit situation. So just wanted to cover that quickly. And of course. You know, um, you know, that, you know, this is how you can get pre-approved uh, with us and, and see what you may qualify for. Hey, and you know what? All you mother truckers out there, I'm just letting you know. I always tell you guys the truth. You know, Bob is my friend. And so if you are going to do something like finance a truck, I'd rather you at least get the right information than go down the rabbit hole with a place that doesn't care about you. So, you know, that's just how I personally feel. And I could put my stamp of approval uh, that Bob will always do the right thing. And sometimes it might not be the right Thing for you to want to hear but it'll be the truth and the truth is better than a lie so Said, you know, man, sometimes <laughs> the truth hurts right alex hey you know <laughs> hey I, I appreciate you i'm gonna put that part in the beginning so people could get some value but you know uh definitely i appreciate you taking an hour almost out of your time to give a free training just to give people information at the end of the day free country take this information do what you want with it and we wish you the best, always. Yes, sir. Alex, appreciate you, my brother. My brother and uh, hope everybody out there drives safe. And yeah, if you're in the market, um, you know, feel free to reach out to us via the uh, pre-approval process. And we'd love to help you out.